With respect to Carl, never before have I understood so little of what a man says. <laughs> Virtually everything that Carl talked about was aloof to me. What on earth was he ranting about? Flies and condoms, monkeys and pushing the left button, cavemen and dinosaurs. And that's just some of you. I mean, let's be honest. If you are in America, I mean, that's the accent is probably a, a problem. But that is the best write-up we've ever had. Yeah. Flies and imagine if you're a new listener. Flies and condoms. Uh, what on earth does that mean? This one's from uh, Kent Plummer from Nova Scotia, Canada. He says, uh, Carl, um, he was, he's wondering if you've got any personal mantras that you could pass along. Uh, for instance, he, he uh, reminds us of Ben Franklin's famous uh, mantra, waste not, want not. Who, who said that? Ben Franklin. What was he, what did he do? What was his job? Benjamin yeah. Franklin was a, a well-respected American politician from it, the 1800s. He was it, a, a sort of thinker, a, a philosopher, a, a scientist, deeply yeah. respected. Um, he's also on a money. big political figure. He features on he's the on a, dollar bill a, or the $10 yeah. bill or something. Yeah. So he's, you know, he's one of the great um, sort of American Enlightenment thinkers. Right. And he came up with the mantra, waste not, want not. You must know waste not, want not. I mean, that's just... Do you I'll, understand I'll, the I'll, phrase waste not, want not? Uh, no, not really, no. What, what does it mean? You've never heard that? I've, I've heard, I think I've heard it. But I don't know. I've never. I've never used it. But and when someone well, in, else said it, I don't know what. Well, in context, it. I mean, all I'm going to do now is paraphrase that and put some prepositions and stuff in it for you. I can't work out how you can't work out what that means. It's well, like uh, don't throw stuff away because you might need it, and therefore you you won't be wanting anything because you didn't throw it away. So. Uh, uh, so, so he was a bit of a well, hoarder. Well, if you don't waste food, for instance, then <laughs> you was a bit of a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake. No, no, but I'm just saying, you know, he, he's a man in power. Is that the best thing he, he ever said? No, I'm sure he came up with many, many profound so why things. Is that one he did remembered? experiments in electricity and conducting electricity, all sorts. But, but that's, that impresses me more, inventing electricity, than someone. He didn't invent electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Don't impress you more than what? Just, just, just saying. Well, it's not want not. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's that good. It's not even catchy. <laughs> what I don't understand is go why, on. why he was the first person to sort of suggest. Look, don't go chucking that out. Keep it. You might need it later. <laughs> <laughs> if I he said, wasn't the first person. <laughs> Say that again. That is brilliant. That now that why isn't that catch on? That is amazing that you've just come up with there. That's poetry. Uh, yeah. How would you word it? I just say, whoa, whoa, don't don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. <laughs> don't be chucking that out. You might need that later. Carl Pilkington. Whereas two thousand and five, waste not, want not is is perhaps a little bit more pithy. A little bit. We more, should uh, go through great say sayings and phrases and, sa and say. If he Carl, could, well, firstly, yeah. does he know what they mean? And then, secondly, can he improve them? That would be brilliant. Right, we'll, we'll make another one. Do that next time. Week. All right. Uh, so, uh, um, oh, let's see. Okay, uh, Winston Churchill. Um, mm -hmm. Never have so few done so much for so many. What do you think of that? How would you? Do you know what that means? So he's he's saying. Well, it's with regard to the Battle of Britain and the pilots that gave their lives. Yeah, I just, I'd just be annoyed if I was one of them who who gave a lot for a few or whatever. Right. No, gave a lot for so many. You were, yeah, if you were one of those few yeah, that I, gave so much for so many, i.e., it means the, these these few good men, w their actions freed the world. They freed the world. They have an impact on yeah. the, every person but, in the world, and they brilliant. they were few yeah. brave men. Yeah, and that's yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if I was one of them men who who gave up his life, right? I'd want a name check. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be bungled in with everyone else who is saying a load of blokes gave it their lives. Well done on that. See you later. That's brilliant. Did you just say bungled in? <laughs> yeah, bungled in. Yeah. You made up a word. Did you want to be bungled in? You made up a word. See, that's it. You see, we've been looking for it. That's original. That's Carl Pilkington. I don't want to be bungled in. But anyway, we were talking about <laughs> sayings and that. <laughs> um, stitching time saves nine. Don't, don't. Oh, you know, I'm never going to use that, I don't think, anyway. So, <laughs> okay. Suzanne You're never going to understand it fully, are you? Suzanne repairs me stuff anyway. It, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But what about the one, um, about the one in, in greenhouses and that? People who live one? in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Yeah. What do you, what that? Does that confuse you? You've never understood that one? No, that's, that's a lot clearer, isn't it? It's sort of saying, don't be chucking stuff about if you're surrounded by glass and what have you. 
Yeah, but don't forget, it, it's an analogy, it's a metaphor, it, it's not to be taken literally. It's not really just talking to people who live in glass houses. It's saying, uh... uh Hang um, on, sorry, before you say that, Rick, I just, I'm intrigued to know if he's fully got to grips with this. Okay. Just give us your explanation again of what you take that to mean. Well, just don't be chucking stuff about. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, well, if that was it, they just say no, no, that. No, no, but but that saying's been around a lot longer than we think. That's when people probably did live in basic glass houses and stuff. No, no, whoa, 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 what they mean whoa. now? No, Who has ever could, lived in a sorry, glass house? So this, they went cavemen went from rock to a nice crystal structure, did they? That, what, what are you talking about? When did people live in glass well, no, houses? No, what they mean now? When when that saying's used now, they mean sort of you know plasma tellies, <laughs> uh, ornaments. No, they don't. They're saying don't chuck stuff about because no, you'll break it. No, no, it's not about uh, damaging your own property. They don't mean you're inside the glass house throwing rocks inside your own glass it's house. It's a metaphor. It means don't be having a go at people if you yourself have got uh, uh, more to lose. Do you know what I mean? It, it means it, it. It could be. It could be anything. Don't don't start a war where you could come off bad as well. It's about how fragile your situation is. If you live in a glass house metaphorically don't throw stones at someone else because when he throws it back at you your house is more easily damaged than his again metaphorically it doesn't mean that if you're living in a glass house or in a house with other precious objects you don't in your own home throw bricks about because that would be a very specific audience that I was trying to reach that phrase I mean let's be honest okay. what kind of a mental you know case? what I think we've got the crux to this right I, I think I can answer right right Carl what is an analogy? Uh, it's sort of like a little story told quickly. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? It's it a little so, story it? told quickly. Uh, to what end? Well, it depends what the story is. Depends. Okay. Give me, a, give me an analogy. Well, for me, I thought a one with the greenhouse. Yeah. Right? Um. It's, no, it's a greenhouse. It's before it's just a glass <laughs> house. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then a glass house. Okay. All right. You, do, do what I mean is that glass house is metaphorical. <laughs> it's about the fragility of your situation as compared to your aggression or your... You see, uh, I, I just prefer sort of, you know, what you say is what you mean. So people in who live in a glass house have to answer the door. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I mean, because, you, you, because you may be a genius, because I don't get that. People who live in glass houses have to answer the door. Okay, let him, let's hear his explanation. Because the people knocking at the door will be able to see you, because it's a glass house. But what, eh? But you literally mean, don't you? There's no analogy there or metaphor for you. You literally mean, if you live in a glass house you and someone knocks the door. the door. So there's no, there's no hidden meaning there, is there? Well, no. Couldn't that also you don't but you have to add a number of other things, uh, another ca other caveats. Surely, if you live in a glass house, don't walk around naked. Yeah. If you live in a, <laughs> th these are literal. See, if you now you could make you could actually make that into quite a nice uh, um, uh, uh, saying there because if, if that meant if someone said that to me and they weren't a shaved chimp, right? <laughs> if they said people who live in glass houses have to answer the door, I think that means oh yeah, it means that um, there are no secrets you can't hide behind anything if you're if you're very open if you've chosen to be totally open all the time you can't go back on it so people I if you wear everything on your sleeve if you shout around and you tell the truth and uh, you can't go back on it they can see they can see through yeah, you it can mean that as well yeah oh okay. <laughs> that's handy but uh, just the idea that in your head there are you need that there should be sayings for people who live in glass houses who is it that's living in a glass no. house? Well, it, I, I'm not talking about them. It's just that if everyone else is bringing up about these people who are living in glass houses, let's let's get to the real problems they've got. He <laughs> <laughs> still hasn't got to grips with the idea of the no, metaphor or the simile. People who live in glass houses should live near a glazier. Right. Well, here's another saying, right, that I, that I learnt recently from a mate, right? Um, well, there's an elephant in the room. <laughs> okay, I, don't, I haven't heard that one, but explain it to me. It's like, um... When you when something's going on in a room, right? But no one's mentioning it because everyone's a bit too sort of. But in a way, it's better that it's out. It's like how you know you whenever we go out for something to eat or a drink or something, mm. it's normally after about five minutes the sort of topic gets onto the shape of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, right? I can't resist the shape of your head. Right. So you're you're happy. It's talking not just about the it. shape though, is it? It's the state of it as no, well. But what I'm, what Outside I'm, and in. But I mean, it's a fascinating <laughs> little objet d'art. His what, head. But what I'm saying, it's re perfectly round. 
Uh, it's got no hair where it should have. Um, and it's well, hollow. <laughs> <laughs> the features are slightly too small for the face. Yeah. No, unbelievable. No, but what I'm saying is, it's interesting how, like, I'm the elephant in the room, right? Nobody's talking about it. You mention it once, suddenly it's a talk of the town. <laughs> It's, it's what I mean, everybody starts joining in going, well, yeah, it is round, but it does suit you. And these are people who I don't even know sometimes, <laughs> and they're all dipping in. And that is an elephant in a room. <laughs> so you you don't want people to discuss the shape of your head or the or the lack of hair? Um, you would feel better, you would feel happier that they didn't mention that? Sometimes I think it's better that it's out there. It's made me a stronger person, though. It's the same way, you know, we were talking about religion and that. Samson Delilah, yeah. he got weaker without hair. Mm. Whereas with me, I think it's it's made me stronger, because you know it's almost like it's treated like a disability. Everybody's sort of mentioning it and talking about it. What's it like having a bald head? And you know what I mean. So it's made me stronger. But would you ever wear a wig? Um, not really. What I was mean, a long wig like, Samson? Well, the only time I wanted a wig was when I did jury duty once, right? And it was annoying <laughs> that I was sat on the jury right in front of like these criminals. <laughs> Right? Everybody else has got disguises. The judges have them wigs on. Right? <laughs> that's not disguises! It is a disgu that's a disguise. That's why judges wear them, right? So no! Well, then why <laughs> they print their name in the paper and have a picture? What do you mean it's a disguise? Well, it's a disguise, isn't no, it? No! If it was a disguise, they'd go in with one of those um, glasses with a nose and the beard attached if it was a disguise. All judges would look like Groucho Marx if it was a disguise. Well, th I'm just saying that's that's what annoyed me when I was sat there on the front row, right? I couldn't have been any closer to the criminals, right? <laughs> right? I was sat there and I thought, why didn't I just pop a little wig on or a pair of glasses? <laughs> seen you in the front row at Crown Court. No, because I would love to see it because uh, in this country you're not allowed to show pictures of jurors. Uh, you can't take photos <laughs> in a courtroom, so there's always these sketch artists that draw drawings and it's on the news. The idea that we'd have seen 11 people and a sort of crusty the clown figure would have been amazing. Yeah, uh, uh, I would love to see the, uh, the uh, artist do an interview because it would be like complicated people. Oh, hey, he looks like a character for, and then just a little round head. Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown sitting on the end. <laughs> Again, I can't remember which show this was that we were discussing this, but we talked about um, well-known phrases and um, quotes from the past. We talked about Benjamin Franklin. And people have uh, this is an email we've had saying, um, Carl, what do you take by the uh, well-known saying? A stitch in time saves nine. A stitch in time saves nine. Oh, a stitch in time saves nine. Yeah. See, uh, it's another one that I don't. I don't think I've picked up on a lot of these sayings that are being sort of thrown about willy-nilly. Willy-nilly. Um, <laughs> willy-nilly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Willy nilly. No, yeah. no, but I, I, again, it's one of them. Like, like last week, I've heard of it, but but I've what does willy nilly mean? Just sort of like throwing it about all over the place. What? What, what do you mean? But what someone said, what? What does what does the term willy nilly mean? It just sort of means you know carefree. That's right. Yeah. So okay, but what good. does a stitch so you, in time so say? So you understood willy nilly. So you used a phrase. Yeah, but it sounds I mean, nice, you used it. it. You said it willy nilly. But um, uh, you you sort of got the gist of it. So what does a stitch in time saves nine mean? I I, I don't know. You what do you mean know. you don't know? Think about it. A stitch in time saves nine. Is it to do with sewing? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, so okay, if, it's not that clear. So it's if you got so if you got a jacket, yeah, and the seam starts coming undone. Oh, there's a little bit of seam. I'll leave it. Oh, it's getting worse and right, worse. Soon right. your sleeve falls off. So, you just need one stitch there, that'll do it. If you do it now, later you'll need nine stitches. And that, of course, uh, is an analogy to other things. If you leave something that, that, that needs attention or repair, it'll get worse. So do it now. Do it in time. Yeah, they could have said a tile in so time saves nine on the roof. They just used a, you know, a sewing analogy. But it depends if you're busy at that point, because if you've got, <laughs> if you've got something else that needs doing, that means that isn't being done because you're messing about putting something out a hole in your coat, is what I mean. Yeah. You can't always do stuff straight away. So maybe, I don't know, I don't know if there's a, a, a sort of a middle ground where you don't have to do it straight away, but stitching A stitch sometimes time, today. Say in 15 or whatever, meaning yeah. you don't have to do it straight away, but just do it before it gets really bad. Brilliant. Do you think yours is less poetic than, than A Stitch in Time Saves Nine? So yours is, this is what you want it to be a quote, right? Well, you could do it now, but if you're doing something else, then, uh, you know, look, what, 
Well, don't do it immediately, but do it soon so it doesn't get really bad. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> no, but it's the same, that's the same way I treat most things in life. It's like, I never go to the doctor's. Unless it's really That is sensible. Bad. That is very good advice. No. That's brilliant advice well, for anyone is, listening. Never go to the doctors. Unless it's really bad. But that's why a lot of people, particularly working class people, you know, um, die because they don't want to bother the doctor or they're mildly embarrassed or they don't know um, symptoms, bad symptoms. Go to the doctor if, 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 you, if you're not sure about something. Like you were terrified to go and have your prostate. Still not been. Not doing it. Why not? I wish you wouldn't talk about it, because now Suzanne will listen to this, and she'll go, oh yeah, you haven't been, and start dragging it up again. But why are you worried about a, a little, uh, a, a qualified I doctor? I don't know what they're doing up there. What, they what just pop- What are we in? They- <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? They pop their finger up. That's what I mean, though. Why? Well, it's 2006. Yeah. Why are they still using the index finger? <laughs> what, would you prefer the forefinger or the thumb, would no. you? No, what I mean no! is, we've got- Or a thumb on a stick, some kind of thumb on a stick, you-, you Yeah, would you prefer it to a be- A mechanical thumb. A robot good. thumb. Why isn't it just a little camera? Or something that- They, have, well, they well, put the camera up if, if they initially discover something. But just put the camera up straight away. No, they don't the need visit. to. They pop the finger up, feel that the prostate isn't swollen, wiggle it around a little bit, up your, uh, 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 up your back passage. They, what I are just, you worried I, about? I don't think- they, they need to do Are that you embarrassed? Are you age? embarrassed about being in a room with your trousers around your ankles and a little fella popping A his... little bit, yeah. Why? And the other thing is, it's not just that, is it? So, <laughs> you go in there, they check your heart out and that, which to me is the most important thing, because that's what keeps you going, isn't it? <laughs> yeah! Right? You've got to go there, you yeah. sat on the bus, stressing out, thinking, oh, in less than half an hour I'm gonna have a finger up the arse, <laughs> right? <laughs> what is the problem And they go though? in, they check your heart, they probably- <laughs> Check your testicles and that. What's up with that? They check your testicles, yeah. That's yeah, but it's all building, and you, you've sat there going, oh, soon that'll, that'll be happening. Yeah. And that's what puts me off. So if they just came round when you were asleep, <laughs> Suzanne just let them in and goes, he's over there, right? Yeah. And they crept up and went, <laughs> bang, you, you go, what are you doing? That. I just don't understand why they don't teach you how to do it yourself. How can they- <laughs> Wow! How can they teach- Imagine you, squatting in a corner, with one hand on your bollocks and the other finger up the arse, going, it seems to be alright. Carl, you don't understand the phrase, a stitch in time saves night. I don't think you should be doing any kind of invasive medical research in your own human body. But- but then- Who knows the what trouble you're gonna cause? No, but then at you least- You would get stuck. Yeah. You would get stuck. Susanna come out, your fist would be up your own arse. <laughs> Carl's gonna teach us all about Sigmund Freud. No, we're not, we're not doing that. Well, no, yes, we, we are, are, because last yeah. week we promised people that you'd research yeah. Sigmund Freud. Yeah, but I, I had a look, but, uh, I didn't find him that interesting, so... But that's not... But this is, this is what irrelevant. I mean, this is what we were talking about. You, you say you wish you could go back and learn stuff in school because you didn't. You want knowledge. You always say about you want to learn yeah, something. Yeah, I want to learn something interesting every day. Yeah, but you've got that... <sighs> I gave him- I had a look at the website, it, it just- Oh, oh, SigmundFroyd.com. Yeah, he started that, I just had he? a look, I just p did a search on, like, famous quotes from philosophy. Quotes, brilliant. That'll get you everything you need, a quote. That's well, I, don't, I don't need to know his history. That sums just... up a man's life work, a quote. No, but that's what you remembered for, isn't it? Churchill will go on the beaches and all that. <laughs> uh, Sigmund didn't really have any- any sort of- Catchphrases is what yeah, you mean. Yeah, that's, yeah, things that you hear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sound bites! Yeah. He, he wasn't good with the press! <laughs> Brilliant. So you haven't well, bothered to learn about him, well, you didn't even pick up a book? I wouldn't know where to start. Do you feel like you're thinking in your head? Sometimes, like then I was. But I don't know if I am, because it's got a mind of its own, hasn't it? <laughs> I did look at some of the things that he'd said, and the one Do it now! Do it now! Why? What have you learned about Freud? Okay, here we go. This is Carl Educates Ricky and Steve. Number one, Sigmund Freud. Carl, tell us what you learned about Sigmund Freud. Right. All I remember oh. was that he said, a baby, you, know, you look at a little baby having some milk from its mum's breast, right? It looks well happy. Uh, it has enough. It's full up, uh, it goes to sleep, it's got a smile on its face, right? He said, <laughs> that's what happens when you're older as well. That's all I remember from all the things that he was saying on his thing. He just said it's weird how like, it's, it's like- Absolute. Now to be fair Rick, that is obviously in translation. Yeah, I know. From the original, so I don't want you- No, I'm not having a go Freud. But, you know. I mean, Freud has been discredited on- on some issues, and we've moved on with experimental psychology and- and- But, but that's- and that's the you. one that was interesting. I don't quite follow- so what do you take from that? Explain that to us in layman's terms. 
Um, I don't know. You, well, that's pointless. Without application, knowledge is pointless. But it's not knowledge, is it? He's just saying drink milk all your life. It's good for you. Can't no, he's not it. saying drink milk all your life. What <laughs> is this? Is, is this an advert he's doing he now? He also came up with go to work on an egg. Yeah. Oh, Christ almighty. But, but like I said, I wasn't that impressed by, uh, by his, by his work. So. Unbelievable. Carl is allowed to vote. <laughs> I know, He's yeah. allowed to cast a vote That's in this true. country. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, no. I wish I hadn't. I've only done it once and look what happened. I got called up for jury duty. <laughs> 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 it's not doing it again. People do what they do anyway. It's, I think they only let us vote so, they, so we feel like we're having a say in what's going on. But really, it just carries on, doesn't it? I haven't seen a big change. But that's exactly why you vote. No, the best thing you can do is look after yourself. Get on with it. Brilliant. Okay, well, I, I hope that's a quote. I hope someone out there who's, uh, you know, maybe making a, a dictionary of quotes or an encyclopedia and they, they've finished with Freud, they've done Freud, they've done Pavlov, he hit a dog on the head with a stick, next, Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington, what would, what do you say about the world? Just get on with it. Mm. Well, we're Brilliant. Not in, we're not in charge of it, is what I'm saying. That's it? nearly as good as, let's go to the beach. Uh, Winston spoke, Churchill. I spoke to my dad about it and he, he called up saying, oh, I'm sick oh, of well, we're gonna about get some, this. some quality thinking here. <laughs> go on. <laughs> go on. No, he was saying... Uh, about global warming and that. Yeah. He was saying he's sick of hearing about it. Right. Because at the end of the day, that's just the world and it. We're all getting old and the world's getting old. That's, that's the end of it. Brilliant. What an, another amazing quote. Well, it is. What, what, what we're trying to do. This is what I'm saying about we don't like people to get old. We're always saying, oh, we can change that face. We can lift your chin up. We can put a wig on you. And Why are you saying, so annoyed about people wanting to live a little bit longer? Because enough's enough, is what I'm saying. The world, the world's the same, it's just getting old and, <sighs> you know, it used to have more green on it, but now it's gone a bit bald. So it hasn't got as much green, it's got more soil. Treat the world like a head. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing quote. <laughs> Treat the That's world so like you, a head. You've actually come up with one there. Um, I thought of another phrase, you could, just, just sitting here talking to you. Flogging a dead horse. Yeah. What do you, what do you think that means? Flogging a dead horse. A number of people are still amazed by your complete lack of understanding some of these famous uh, sayings and phrases. So, well, that's an easy one. Yeah, that's that's like, uh, you know, get get a new get a new horse or. Um, mm. No, he hasn't got it. No one's going to buy it. No, it doesn't mean that sort of flogging. When you're hitting it. Yeah. Right. So what's the point in hitting it? So it's dead anyway. So don't bother hitting it. It's absolutely, not feeling it's pointless. Anymore. It's a wa It just means it just means it's a waste of time. Yeah, but it depends what that horse has done to you. No, it doesn't. No, it does. It's that thing, innit, of like, a, if a bear attacked you mm. and you managed to hit it on the head and it went down, you'd go and you'd be annoyed, you'd still have built up aggression, you'd give it an extra clout. Extraordinary. I don't know who's compiling this book. Sometimes um, it's worth flogging a dead horse if he did something to if he annoyed you. The world's oldest tortoise. A 250-year-old tortoise died last week. Yeah. Did it? Yeah, in a zoo in India. 250 years old. So would th would that have had that thing that they say about how you get a, like a flashback of, of your life? <laughs> 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 you mean your life flashes before your eyes? Yeah, they say, don't they? Just like on your last breath or whatever. You like, like see you coming out of the womb and everything. Well, well, one, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe your life flashes before you. I don't know. I don't know what evidence we've got. People who die say, you know, you never guess what's happening. No, but there's there's loads of things that have happened where people go, oh, that's that's weird. That that goes to show that we've been around before. Or no, it doesn't. There's none. That, I have no evidence for that. Of well, I, I told you that time when it happened to me when I was younger. Go on. Your life flashed before your eyes. Well, it wasn't like a flashback, but it was close. It's the next next thing next to flashbacks. It was. Um, <laughs> I was having a bath, right, and uh, my mum had like run the bath and that, and uh, she said, "Is that is that too warm?" And I said something like, "No, it's it's all right. This it's a lot better than when I used to have a have a bath in that wooden bath in front of the fire." <laughs> okay. And she was like, "What?" And I said, "You know, it happened years ago." <laughs> and she was a bit like, "Oh," and I I can't remember that now, but she talks about it, and 
you know, that just goes to show that- cause I- I was at an age when I wouldn't have known about wooden baths years ago in front of fires. No, but you talk rubbish now. So you, all you were doing, you were talking rubbish from an early age. Where's the problem? No, but you can only talk rubbish if you're aware of knowledge. Well, you- I didn't know about wooden baths, so why would I have invented that? But Carl, that? we've only got your mother's word on this, and she thought you might one day be a doctor. Yeah. So- She put a rock with a feather on it to keep a parrot company. <laughs> Lest we forget. Yeah, but I'm just- just saying. Well, it's all bollocks. Um, so have you researched this? You've tried to find out when little Carl Mark won and his wooden bath when he was- No, around? I don't want to go there, cause that's when you start digging out all sorts it's of stuff. It's rubbish. Trouble, it? It's rubbish. No, it's, it's not rubbish. Well, it's, it is rubbish. What sort of stuff might There's you no discover? scientific evidence No, just like I've said about family trees and that, don't- don't be looking at them. Cause you go, you're only gonna find stuff you don't really want to know about. It's the same as that, innit? Leave it. Let it be. Do you know what I mean? If- if you- if your granddad was Einstein, you'd know about it cause your family would be shouting about it. If he was a bad'un, you'd go, oh, keep that quiet. So right. don't look at family trees and it's the same, don't be looking back in your past lives. <laughs> There's no God past knows lives. What you've been up to. Well. Carl on the wooden bath. Proof. If Carl proof Pilkington uh, live on air talking shit again. <laughs> but this- this tortoise, so if that's- And also its flashbacks would just be, uh, you know, the same wall. I mean it basically spent, <laughs> I don't know how many years, in a cage. It was in the zoo, so uh, it died of liver failure. Which is a problem if you're a tortoise, because with us they can cut you open and have a look at the liver. With that, it's going, forget it, we're not getting in there. It's like you when you didn't want the plumbers to knock through the tiles to check out the piping. It's around with the tortoise. If it's a liver, we're not going through that. It's not worth it. If it's your head or your feet, we'll have a look, mate. But we're not looking at internal organs with a giant tortoise. Why not? Because, what do you mean? Well, can't, can't you drill into those things? It's only, it is only a shell. That is easier to replace than, than skin. Carl. I was joking. You can't do a liver operation on a tortoise. Why not? It's got all the same parts, hasn't it? All the same body parts and that. Well, I don't think that's the point. Well, not really, but, um, yeah, it's just But, but better speaking. ones, in a way, because they live longer. So they're doing something right, aren't mm -hmm. they? If they can live 250 odd years, our, our art can't do that. Mm. Which is what I say about our tortoise has got it right in a way, that it's- it's taking its time on everything. We're rushing about, getting stressed out, that's just, you know, getting on with it. It's not rushing. Uh, it eats healthy, doesn't it? It eats lettuce and stuff. Yeah. So, that's- that's probably doing it right, but to be honest, it's too much. I wouldn't <laughs> want to live 250 years. Just eating lettuce. Let's not forget that all a tortoise does is eat lettuce. <laughs> it's not like it's jet skiing weekends and then getting its lettuce on a Monday. That's all it does, is eat lettuce. Yeah. And that appeals to you, does it? Uh, no, I'm just saying that it must be doing something right, though. Of course it's doing something right. Because it's living 250 years. But all animals do something right, however long they live. Mayflies live a day, but they're doing something right. Well, they're not, hardly. They haven't got a chance to learn how to do it right, and then- and then they're dead. It's, you know, that's from one extreme to another, isn't it? That just mm. seems a bit mental to me, that living a day. I wouldn't bother, so forget it. <laughs> Could you be bothered? You don't- uh, just as you get to know someone. <laughs> yeah. Another mayfly. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying if we had that, if that's how we lived our lives, you wouldn't have a chance to make a mark or anything, would you? It's just- it's Would just, you try and pack a lot in that day? Uh, Disneyland, whatever. No, I'd prefer to make it miserable so I don't miss it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it? How it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you, or are you controlling the brain? I don't know <laughs> if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I, There's Carl. a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you control you, the when, brain? Well, when you, like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making- But you I, are I was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some, uh, rice, uh, kidney beans. Uh, and I thought I had everything, and I sort of was rolling up the paper, and then then something went, oh, an onion. Your so brain did Something that. went an onion, was it Suzanne? No, well, my brain, my brain <laughs> sort of went, you forgot something. Yeah. I, I didn't think I'd forgot. I no, no, you that. are your brain. No, no, but don't you understand, the brain, my brain was in, I was in control of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> when I was writing down rice and kidney beans. But you're not in charge of the onion. That's another part of the brain that's in charge of the onion. <laughs> the onion, the onion sector. Yeah. No, but I'd put the paper away, 
put in my coat, I'm ready to go. Ready but to then, go and get well, the rice. Yes, but, yes, but your onion lobe <laughs> kicked in. <laughs> what, so you, you put the paper in your pocket, you got the coat on, then you just suddenly hear then from it nowhere, was just like, it was onion. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that shopping list. It's in my pocket, I'm thinking, do I need my gloves, it's cold out. Yeah. Suddenly, onion. And it was like, oh yeah, onion, yeah, I had to get the paper out. So what I'm saying is, who's, in, the, who's in charge? The brain, the brain, the mind, the brain is the- what are you doing but who's in that's charge? that's just, you forgot, you forgot the onion and you remember the onion. You must have forgotten things in the past. No, but not, not like that, not where, like, it just made me think, that was weird, who, who reminded me of that? You did! <laughs> yeah, but I'm not- <laughs> No, you are your brain. It's not like there's you, then there's a brain, then there's an extra one looking down at it, oh, the, the, you know, the, the, the meta brain, the thing above it. No, but your brain, your, how does your brain work? <laughs> you give it information, don't you? Well, it takes- Do you mean you give it information? Well, it's if I, it, if I sat in a room with nothing, not feeding it anything, it wouldn't know anything. No, but it, it, it's this thing well, that there's two yous. It's this thing that there's- There's, there's Carl this, and Carl's brain. Yeah, there's, there's not- there's not a duality in this. If you- if, if you go- if you go, come on, come on, now think. That's the brain saying that to itself. It's- it, it's not- there's not two people in there having an argument coming, come on, brain. And the brain's going, oh, don't you start, I was thinking then. And the other thing's going, brain, onion. And the brain goes, Carl, onion. You are your brain. If you are anything, you are, you are your mind, your brain, your collection of memories, your personality. You're not what you look like. Does that answer your question, Carl? Uh, what do you think are then? You were thinking of a tortoise on a skateboard then when I said that last <laughs> sentence, weren't you? <laughs> Went home and looked up Freud on the internet, didn't find him that interesting, so looked at some other philosophers instead. Socrates, Aristotle, why have you just listed some philosophers? Just to show that I'm learning. Well, that's not learning. That's just that's learning their names. That's a list. You might as well write one to a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if someone says, oh, what's your favourite philosopher? I'll go, hang on a minute, and I've got them written down. But what, uh, why are <laughs> you can't just wait a minute, I'll go home, get my enormous diary out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get a wheelbarrow, bring in my workings, <laughs> and say one of the la names I've written down. And when they say, well, why do you like him? Yeah, why you, do you, you just run away? Well, I, I noticed you put, um, Socrates first. Why is he your favourite philosopher? You throw the diary at them and leg it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then you go on to say, it's weird how names have changed, but then there's no other point there. <laughs> just is, isn't it? When you think about, like, Socrates, I've never heard that on anyone who I know, <laughs> is what I mean. It's just, in a way... But you're not Greek, are you? But how did that go about back then? I mean, it, when, say if you were phoning someone up and he said, uh, I'm booking a table for two, they go, name, Socrates, did he ever go, cheers? Without going, can you spell that for me? Well, I don't know what else point you're making. <laughs> I'm just saying it's it's a name that's awkward. You're always going to have to go. Can you spell that for me? You go, and it's not just him. Look at all the other names that are on that list. But they're <laughs> from a different country and a different era. Yeah, I know. But the names I've been to Rome and stuff, and you sort of go. Well, ancient Rome. Just just <laughs> Rome. It hasn't changed, has it? Rome. So it can be ancient Rome or Rome in 2006. It's yeah. The same buildings. Oh, I used to love Nero going around in his Fiat Punto. <laughs> Lao Tzu from years ago came up with some good stuff. One, he know he who knows does not speak. He who speaks does not know. Not entirely true. To lead people, walk behind them. Yeah. And of course, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Yeah, yeah. did that. Uh, his favourites. Maybe maybe this is why people are at the start line spectating at the Commonwealth Games. Well, I, no, it's just that I, I've never understood why in Olympics and stuff like that, if you're gonna watch, don't stand around the start line, go to the end where you see the winner. But because of that saying, it actually makes sense, doesn't it? It's like, well, every step starts with a step or whatever. Say uh, again? Uh, every race, you know, you've got to start with a, with, with a step. Yeah. So, um, uh. Which is to, who am I talking to now, you or your brain? Well, I was thinking about it a bit, so I think I was in control of it a bit more. So, and what have you come up with? Just, just, if you want to stay at the start line, do. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm just saying, if, if you're into ra I'm not, I wouldn't watch a race, right? Okay. But is this you or your brain I'm talking to now? This is me. Okay. I wouldn't watch- Are you using, are you gonna, are you, are you gonna bring the brain into it, or is it, there's no- I don't just... know, let's just see what happens. <laughs> okay. But all I'm saying is- Right. If I was to watch a race- Yeah. 
I wouldn't hang about the start line because well, you just said capable. you would. What, did I? Yeah, you said that that's the place to start because every every race starts with the start. <laughs> no, but I wouldn't normally. <laughs> Right, I okay. watch anyway. The brain definitely hasn't been used yet. No. Is this you or your brain you're talking about now? It was... I'm just saying about me. If I was on holiday, yeah, and Suzanne said there's a race going on down the road, yeah, I'd go. Well, let's go. Keep going down the road and stand at the finish line. Okay, but, but now what have you to thought? Lazo, yeah, I'd say, well, hang on a minute. Every s race starts with a single step. Yeah. How many people are around the start line? Is there more room there? She goes, yeah, I'll go, let's go there then, it's less busy. Right, and what would you see there then? I'd see people starting the race, but I wouldn't be that impressed with them because I'd go, well, I don't know if any of these are any good. So would you start at the start or the end then? I'd, I, if it was down to me, I, I'd just probably stay at the finish line. Okay, so you wouldn't want to see the first step then? So what Not do you think really. of Lazoo now then? Uh, it's not what- but I wrote down three of his. That one isn't my favourite. That was the third. I preferred the leading people from behind. Okay, and what would you do to lead someone now then? Um, well if you're behind, you don't have to take responsibility, do you? You can go, well, well I didn't send you away, you went there. That's not really leading them, though, is it? Yeah, because I've made them think. I've gone, uh, they go, oh, I've just walked into a big hole. <laughs> I'd go, oh, should have been looking where you're going. <laughs> I haven't led them in that hole. But they've learnt a lesson, they won't go in a hole again. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the greatest <laughs> conversations I've ever been a part of! I mean, that was incredible! <laughs> Never mind Aristotle and Socrates! That was <laughs> incredible, that! Um, if someone's out there, could they make a transcript of that? Because I think that, you know, in a thousand years' time, that'd be amazing. That was incredible, Carl. And not once was the brain used. <laughs> Like the monkeys, uh, peeling potatoes. Right. That's never happened. They go and put nuts in the salt water to, to salt the nut. Whatever. How does that, how does that get to peeling potatoes? But, uh, because in your head, they were working in a canteen. Making chips. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah! It doesn't yeah. matter what the food is, I'm just saying how they know how to sort of prepare I love food. the fact that you don't care what the fact is. When you're discussing facts, that's all that matters. Otherwise, on Mastermind, they just go, um, uh, who wrote Much Ado About Nothing? Dickens? Yeah, close enough, whatever, someone did. It, the fact is the, what matters. Yeah, but with that question, that's got a straightforward answer. What I'm telling you is the way that animals work. If it's a potato or a nut, it's a foodage. <laughs>Do you know what he said to me the other day? Uh, this is unbelievable. This is one of the most stupid, incredible things I've ever heard. He was talking, and he suddenly stopped, and he was thinking about it, and he went, oh, I don't know what, he went, you'd never see a black ghost. Extraordinary. True, though, isn't it? I've never seen a ghost, full stop. There are no ghosts. There aren't ghosts. No, but I mean when you just see them in, like, magazines and that. <laughs> <laughs> This is a bit of a bigger issue. We're always making more and more stuff, right, um, in the world. You know, big buildings, big planes, mm -hmm. big boats and that. Will we ever get to a point where all this is too heavy for the world to handle? Right, what errors he made there, Steve? <laughs> what physical, scientific error has he made there with that question? I can't, I can't begin to explain it. Carl, we're not getting the rocks from other planets. It's already here. It's like having a, a, it's like having, um, a big pile of books in a room, and then moving them over to the other side of the room and building a thing going, oh, can the room take it? I'm building a lot of things out of these books. What about, what about plastic? Where's that come from? Other chemicals that existed on the planet. Yeah. Do you see, do, do you see the point? Hang on a minute, though. What about a little tree? You plant that as an acorn, it grows, Rick. That's bigger, that's more stuff. Yeah. Don't listen to him, Carl. He's patronising you. What about you. acorns and that, though? Right. They they take they grow from minerals and proteins already in our atmosphere or in our um, the mass of Earth. What about a cat, Carl? Right, you get it. It's a very tiny kitten, but it grows up and it's bigger. Carl, he's he's doing it on purpose. Elephants. 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 They they're very small to begin with, but they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and so they get heavier and heavier. Mind you, dinosaurs have gone. You know, but you. <laughs> A chimpanzee with a typewriter, with an infinite amount of time, he would eventually, by definition, mathematically, type everything ever possible, okay? Or, it's an infinite amount of, um, uh, chimps with typewriters, and one of them will type it first time. But already, that's, that's sort of, that's not right. 
you either need to have what one do you mean? What, what? You mean uh, employment laws? What do you mean it's not right? Let's hear him out. Please. Okay. If it's one monkey, <laughs> yeah, with a typewriter that's got loads of ink in it and that, right? At least it knows what it's done in the past. Don't. It's not. Keep going. Cry. If you've got a load of monkeys, it's like it's like if you have too many. What's that saying about too many chefs? Too many chimps for the soup. Right. Well, it's the same thing. It's like, well, I, I didn't tell you to put salt in it. I was going to put salt in it, and it messes it up. Whereas if it's just one. They know what's gone on. So what I'm saying I, I, is, I, I, just leave him I can't I, be bothered. I want to hear. I want uh, to hear it, the rest. This blows my mind. He doesn't know what this does to me. It's a mathematical problem. I want to hear the rest. Well, it's just I just don't think it will happen. What I do mean, you mean you don't think it'll happen? Infinity works it out for you by definition. But not, not Shakespeare. Oh, shut up, you, you know, idiot! Rick, do you know what he said to me? I said to him. Uh, I just explained it to him, I said, God. you've got an infinite number of monkeys, infinite number of typewriters, they will e type the complete works of Shakespeare. He yeah. said, have they read Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot! Play I record, said, no, I'm not having this conversation. Do you, know, do you know Anne Frank? That's all, all I know about Anne is, there's no point pretending here. Anne! That I know <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Right, um. Was it, tell us everything you know about Anne Frank. Uh, she was in a cupboard. <laughs> yeah, what else? If she didn't do that, I wouldn't know about her, seriously. <laughs> That's all I know about her. <laughs> yeah. So what did she do? But what well, do you, how do you think we know, we, kn we know about- we know about her cupboard because of her book, don't we? But hang on, what- what- in the bigger scheme of things, why was she in a cupboard? I- I, I don't know. Right. I honestly don't know. You don't know anything else about Anne Frank beyond the fact that, to <laughs> quote you, she was in a cupboard. Well, what's she done then? You tell me, why should I know more about Firstly, her? Firstly, I don't think she was in a cupboard. <laughs> she wasn't in a cupboard. She was in an attic. Alright. Yeah. So yeah. what was she doing? She was hiding from the Tidy Nazis. <laughs> she was hiding from the Nazis. But isn't that the first place they'd look, sort of <laughs> <laughs> work, work from the top down? <laughs> no, they weren't specifically looking for Anne Frank. <laughs> they weren't going, where is she? Where's Frank? If she gets that book out, we are <laughs> in the deep <laughs> shit. We've got to stop the book. Imagine oh God. But Just anyway. imagine if he was in charge. We did put him in charge of the country. Just, Terrifying. Wouldn't that be amazing? Let him run the country. Just for a week. Or, or the mayor. What would you do if you were the, uh, the president or the oh, Lord Mayor of London or the Prime Minister? Prime Minister Carl. I, I wouldn't know. do it like he's gonna be off of it. It's a hypothetical question, Carl. No, well, Su Suzanne was, uh, alright, me, me missus, if you're a new listener. Your keeper, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, help her. She was, she was watching the news trying to follow some heavy stuff. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, the weather. What? You know what I, mean? <laughs> I just was like bored and I was reading about that mouse that had an ear on its back and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, so she said, "Well, you take notice of this. Should be, you know, you know what Ricky and Steve are like. They, you know, they try to teach you stuff and you don't even want to learn. Mm. <laughs> so to try and get me interested in it, she was like saying, "What would you do if you're president and stuff?" Yeah, and I, I can't be doing with any of it. Hassle. What did you come up with? You must what have been. What, what would you? What did you come up with? Did you come up with anything? I had a little, um, the design of it, right? I yeah. said I'd, 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 I'd have, like, red and blue, to <laughs> sort of, do you know what I mean? Both, sort of, major sides into one. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, blue. that's broken the back of it. That's, that's a pretty good manifesto so far. Uh, um, anything else? What's on the second page? I had, like, uh, KP looks after me. <laughs> that would be the badges, would it? Yeah. That's um, good. I'm a KP nut. Yeah. <laughs> um, KP looks after me. Yeah, brilliant. That's about as far as I went with it. <laughs> What would you do? What about you know policies, transport, um, crime, uh, uh, you know, just just law and order? Um, yeah. How would you? What would you do? How would you deal with crime? What would your initial approach be? Would you introduce guns? Should police carry guns? Nah. No. Yeah. Um, would I have to worry about that? <laughs> okay. Uh, no. Good minister? point. Good point. No. What um, I'm saying is that I mean Tony Blair isn't sorting everything out, is he? No, but he has a say in most things. Does he? <laughs> <laughs> well, go on then. What what are the problems at the moment? I need sorting out. Well, generally, how would you? How would? What's the best way to combat? Would you? Uh, would you bolster up the prison system? Would you uh, introduce more community service? Would, would, you, would you make? Would you make? Would, would you go harsher for say? For say, um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, drugs. Would you go harsher or or less harsh? There's there's pros and cons of both, isn't it? Because of course you ca you can't see to condone it, but some people, you know, you don't want to. Go through the court system and cost taxpayers thousands of pounds of money for someone. I don't know the difference between smoking a spliff and dealing crack. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You have to all these things. Have, to, have I lost you? 
Yeah, I'd, I'd just think about it for a bit, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> You'd think about it for a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Probably ask Suzanne. <laughs> this is amazing. Get her help on it. Yeah. Can we what about the foreign situation? Would you, uh, would you have supported Bush in his war on, against, on terrorism? Um. You are aware um, of this war that we had recently? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. I mean, if I was new, though, couldn't I just say, look, new slate. Do you know what I mean? Let's start again. Yeah, right. of course you can. I'm in charge now, let's, you know, let's see if we can sort this out. What would you do then? Then see what happens. <laughs> just leave Brilliant. It. Just leave Suck it. it and see. Brilliant. Brilliant. This, yeah, this is excellent. Now so this is, uh, this is not really your jurisdiction. This is not really your area, but you, I imagine you'd have some powerful friends who might on, have a say in on, it. Go on, go Yeah. Would you, uh, what would you do about, uh, single sex marriages? Same sex marriages. See, this you... has got, ca it's Cameron, I thought Cameron had blown it on Big Brother because they said, um, you know, what, what do you think about, um, uh, gay fellas getting married? And he went, I oh, know, in the Bible it says, you know, a man and a woman. And I thought, oh, he's put off a lot of, yeah. I don't mean, think many Christians tune into Big Brother, but we know the gays love it. Yeah. They love Big Brother, don't they, the gays? Yeah, so interesting. But, uh, so, uh, what, would you know, you, what would your take be on that? Same sex marriages? Um, and then what, having a kid? Well, just let's start off with, you well, know. that's all right, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just let them get on with it. Sure. It's not affecting anyone else. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Right? But it starts getting tricky. Right. When you get a kid. Okay. Go on, why? Well, it's it's just tricky, innit? Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, you could be right. I'm not giving any- I mean, you know, uh, we're not- there's no right or wrong it's answer. It's all right. If you were in like- if you lived in the jungle, right, with no one else, yeah. right, and you just had these two fellas, right, yeah. looking after you, but- because you've got no one else looking in on that saying, oh, you're a bit weird, aren't you? Do sure. you know what I mean? But right. as soon as you come so to- So is it- what- why the- why have they got married? Do you think the gay people turn to a bloke because they couldn't get a woman? Um, If it- if you live- if, if there's two fellas go away and they're in the jungle, they go, we're definitely not gonna find a woman here, we might as well bum. That's not how homosexuality starts. People don't- It makes don't, you wonder No, if... no, it does make you wonder. Gays don't go, well, I'll tell you what, I haven't seen a woman I fancy yet, I'll try a bit of knob. <laughs> no, 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 but what I'm saying is, right, if you're brought up in like a little jungle, right? Yeah. Uh, you how are you to... brought up? Someone just puts you there. <laughs> I don't no, know what- explain. I don't I know can't what this be bothered, is not- Steve, I can't be bothered Go running on, the country. Go on, mate, I'm listening, I'm fucking- <laughs> I can't be bothered running the country! Like, I'm too much trouble for you! KP <laughs> takes care of me. Alright, yeah, fair yeah, enough. What okay. I'm saying is, right, if you're brought up in a jungle- yeah. Right. Right? Bro what own. do you mean brought up? Just let him finish. What does he do mean you understand brought, brought up, though? Like Tarzan. <laughs> what? You've got to tell me what you mean by brought up. Just Wolves! <laughs> chimps! What? Right, well there's a good example of what I'm saying to you. Right. Right, what I'm saying is, there's a fella, right, he's brought up in the jungle. Shut up, just let him finish. Brought. Let him finish! There's no women about, he doesn't know about women, he doesn't understand what women are. Right. Right? But another fella walks in, in the scene. Yeah. And he gets pally with him. <laughs> what does he talk about? Then they've both got needs. <laughs> <laughs> this scenario <laughs> is ridiculous. What? How has he lived? <laughs> or, or do you know what's his reference I points? I can't be bothered with this. Honestly, Saturday should be, you know, day off and that, not worrying <laughs> about problems. So, uh, there we go. Carl as president. He's still, he's still confused, aren't you, Carl? Just a little bit, just a little bit sort of amazed. Yeah. By the body. Yeah. You're just in the, awe of it, aren't you? Just the way- I'm amazed how two people can buy a baby on the internet for £3,000 and not realise it's a chimp till it goes to school. No, 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 but seriously. What would you know? Talking about there during elbow and fallen angel, <laughs> uh, we were talking about that. I think, yeah, if you're locked up, well, not locked up in a room. You've got a normal life, except there's no women in it. Yeah, right. But how would that happen? What would this point of reference? How would you bring right, up hang a on person? Can I just ask you totally something? Go on. How can infinite monkeys and a typewriter? Right. Again, I've told it before. Right. That is not. You don't actually have to test that model. It's. It's. Um, basically a model for the- th that explains the nature of infinity, okay? Yeah, I've told you before, it- mm. it works because of the definition of infinity. There's no- there's nowhere in the world you'll ever be able to get an infinite amount of monkeys and typewriters to comp- But anyway, all I'm saying yeah. is, I think if- if you don't know about women, would you crave for a woman, even well, though you, you don't you, know you, 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 When you hit 
sort of puberty, your hormones will kick in and you you start getting urges. But for what? If you don't know about it? You don't have to know about it. You don't, when, if you grew up and you started feeling hunger, you wouldn't go, I wonder what that is. You'd go, get me a sandwich, I'm starving. It's different though, it's different. But I'm not, um, but, but we're oh, not it's saying weird. it's, uh, it's all hardwired or people are, can't change their, their natural state. We do it all the time. We fight nature all the time with conditioning. God is weird, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, well that's I, that I, one. I'll tick that. It's weird, isn't it? No, the body is. There was something, yeah. did, you, did you read that thing the other week about, um... Man with two penises? <laughs> no, 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 we don't need that. We don't need uh, that. Uh, lawyer who got in office realised he was actually an orangutan <laughs> and they just shaved him and put a suit on him. From Hugo Boss. And the funny thing is, he won the case and the judge said, well, <laughs> don't send him back to the jungle. Let him set off on his own. Bodge it, wibble and podge. <laughs> <laughs> You'd make the best judge in the world. No, there's a fella. Here's a banana. Hang on. <laughs> Here's something I've learnt, remember? Go Going on. Back to like show four or whatever. Go on. What show is it? Four. The flea can jump over the London Eye? No! No, it yeah. can jump the equivalent of if it was a six foot man. It can jump about six years high. A flea cannot jump over the London Eye. Y yes, it can. Yeah, it can. And <laughs> T tell tell your kids that. Can't. Oh, I remember? Oh, a flea can jump over the London Eye, and an ant can lift three <laughs> Volvos. <laughs> <laughs> it's a slightly truncated show, isn't it, today, Carl? We've got nothing like to trust. I don't like change, and that's what's happened. I'm not you don't do you? You're like Rain Man. Yeah. He really is like Rain Man. Uh, anything change? It, 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 it's got to get in a little routine. You can't. Uh, no, uh, I don't like to. I'm not like Suzanne's mum and dad and what have you. Where routine cannot change no matter what. Like what? Well, we've talked about it where, you know, if it's a Tuesday, I'm having sausage, egg and chips no matter where I am. <laughs> that's, that's what they're like. Right. That's, what, they're, that's what they'll remember, actually. When I'm saying about stuff about Live 8 and all that, you know, people will remember. If people said to a dad, you know, you remember Live 8? Okay, what day was it on? Tuesday when I had sausage, egg and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. But the thing is today, normally we have a bit of a, you know, I know what we're doing where and all that and it's all sort of messed up. We don't usually know what we're doing where. We no. say, what should we do next? No, you but, go, what? but I know, like, Rockbusters has been done early. Right. So that's, that's normally done early. that's really throwing you guys uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I just uh -oh. don't, uh, I don't like all this change and that, it's messing about, isn't it? Rain man. If you get, I mean, I think I read that, like, a big chunk of ice. Uh, fell off one of the ice, uh, what do you call them? Caps. Ice caps. Something like, the th I think they said it's the size of the Empire State Building or something. Right. It, it snapped off and went into the water and it's melted. And they said, oh, it's bad news, you know, that, that something that size is melting. But the way I look at it, if something that size falls into the water, it's like a big ice cube and it's gonna freeze it up again. You, you with me? No. Not really, Carl. Go, go on. Right, you get a giant ice cube. Yeah. The size of the Empire State Building. Yeah. Stick it in the water. Yeah. It's gonna make uh, that. It's gonna stick back on again, isn't it? Well, no. Stick uh, back only on if again. it freezes up again. Yeah, well, it will freeze up. The water's well, it won't, gonna get cold again because you've just put a giant ice cube in the water. Well, so when you put <laughs> when you put an ice cube in a drink, the drink doesn't freeze, does it? No, the ice melts. Like, if you put one the size of an Empire State Building in your glass of Jack Daniels, it's gonna make it freezing. <laughs> It's not going in a glass of Jack Daniels, it's going in the ocean. I know, but I'm, that, you see, I'm using my fables. Imagine a <laughs> world. <laughs> Use your brain instead! What is your favourite word? Uh, don't think I've got a favourite. Because you only use them when you need to, don't you? I don't just go about saying the same word. So, uh Well, alright. Yeah, it's not my favourite, it's just that it does the job. It's, it does the, the necessary job for that time, doesn't it? It's like, how are you? I'm all right. It's a greeting. What about, um, I think serendipity was voted England's favourite word. Never used it. No. Stupid word. Who decided that? I don't know, it was a poll, but I was suggesting things. I'm, I can't believe people coming up going, um, favourite word, <laughs> serendipity. <laughs> Thanks for asking. So, yeah, but, yeah. but the thing is, say if it meant, oh, I'm fed up, would it still be the best word? Is it based on how it sounds and how it's put together or what it means? Be I think both. everything. But then loads of words are being left out on, you know, which are probably brilliant words and they're not getting a look in. Such as? Uh, well, like that one, fed up. I'm fed up. It two, sums two it up, doesn't it? Well, two, two you know. 
uh, it just sums it up. When someone goes, how are you? You go, I'm fed up, me. Sick of it. It's another good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get to it. Come on, to it. Some of your other favourites, right? I've had enough. It's just all stuff. These like aren't words. They're <laughs> phrases. They're <laughs> all negative. They're yeah. all whinging. These aren't exactly. These aren't words. What's your favourite thing? My favourite thing to do is moan. Yeah, that would be the well. It's not one word. It's loads of words. Fed up. Sick of it. Ah, oh, enough. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Whinge should be your favourite word. Yeah. Whinge is a good word. I like NGEs. Mm. Lozenge. <laughs> whinge. Flange. Yeah. What is your least favourite word? Uh, it might be serendipity. <laughs> that would be up there for me. I tell you what, that would be up there for me. Uh, probably like on? French words that have made it into the English thing. Blamange. Just, just. There's a munch. There's an unge there. <laughs> so you know. How could you dislike it? How could you dislike a blamange? <laughs> but just, just you know, as if we haven't got enough words in our books. Go on. Because I was thinking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Alph alphabet, right? Why have we got that many? When other countries get by, without that many letters in it, we got more words than any other yeah, languages. Yeah, well, well, but that's because we got more the more letters. Well, I don't know. So that. we've we've created a headache. I reckon you could at least half it. Well, you probably could half it. Well, you only use about half a dozen of them. No, but stuff like an X. You look at words that have got X in, and they're always words that you go, "What does that mean? How's someone come up with that?" <laughs> That's how it comes across to me, and it, there's loads of big words, it's like dinosaur names. It's like, well look, nobody was about when they were knocking about, so let's, make up, some, at least. let's make up some names for them using the letters that hardly get used. They've all got Y's and X's in them. <laughs> yeah, they have, yeah! That's what I'm saying, it's like, well, let's use it for that. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you just, it's not so much what is your least favourite word, you just don't really like just, most just, of the just words. Say, just cut here. down the words. Stop adding. Stop adding new words. I get by, I don't know how many words there are in the world, but I reckon I hardly use any of them. Well, I'll tell you what, this year's word must be podcast. Yeah, but That'll it's- That'll be in the dictionary and uh But it's made up, innit? It wasn't here before, it's just another one. This is what I'm saying about- But what else would you call this? You know, just there broadcast. is a new concept called podcasting. There yeah, is a podcast. But it's also a broadcast. We had a word for it. It's still a broadcast. Yeah, but they go, oh, you're a broadcaster. Oh, what, what radio station? No, I don't work on a radio station. I, um, I, um, I do a radio show, but I don't understand. Well, I do a radio show and I upload it and I don't understand. It's called a podcast! Done! Here's another idea. Go Add on. a new one, get rid of an old one. Last one in, first one out, or whatever. Do it that way. That's a good way. What would you get rid of then? So, we've brought in podcast this year, but what, <laughs> but what uh, word would you lose? Well, uh, what's the name? Those birds that died out. Dodos. Get rid of it. <laughs> if the bird's gone, the word can, surely. <laughs> it's, uh, it's almost profound. Oh, it's amazing. It's great. Oh, God. What turns you on, creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Uh, learning. That's a nice answer. Yeah. Learning. Excellent. Learning Will stuff. you say that? Yeah, but I, 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 everything you teach me, I take it in. It's just that sometimes I go, I don't, I don't get it. But that still counts as far as I'm concerned. Well, no, it doesn't. Learning is uh, knowledge is uh, th there must be some sort of retention. You can't say I've got a great memory for a second. <laughs> you can't say that. You, it has to stay there, and then then knowledge has to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, applied. You can't just have all this knowledge that isn't applicable because it's useless. I mean, trivia is useless to a large extent. It's not real knowledge because it, it doesn't really help you in it, it, it practically. No, but there's a lot of that going on. You're always reading stuff that you go, I've just read that. It's got me thinking for a minute. It's not going to help me in any way, but it gets a reaction, doesn't it? Well, that's good, yeah. That's, that's, that's what, yeah, that's, that's that's what, what art mean. does. And yeah, sometimes education's good for its sake if it really does inflame. But, but then sometimes, like I've said before, you can know too much where it gets you down. Go on. Uh, I just was reading something about an octopus. That's that's like a killer octopus, and yeah. it annoyed me that this was knocking about now because <laughs> I didn't know. I thought they were quite friendly. <laughs> you, whenever you see them in cartoons and that, they're always happy, aren't they? And then suddenly, like they've, they've sort of brought the whole sort of uh, creature down. Do you know what I mean? No. What do you mean? Well, just just. 
you know, when when you see them in films, they're, they're running about and that, and everybody likes an octopus. <laughs> but this one that's on the- it was- it was your fault, really, cause you told me about that frog that's going about killing people. No, I didn't say that. Uh, so I looked it up on the internet at, like, other creatures and stuff. Dot and com. there's, uh, yeah. there's, uh, some octopus that's in the sea. Mm. Uh, and what it does, y you don't even have to, like, threaten it. It just spits in the water. And if that stuff gets on you, does you in. Again, I'm- I, mm. So in a way it's good knowledge because, I mean I don't go in the sea anyway because it's full of stuff like that, but that's <laughs> just reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about just gauzing everywhere, <laughs> uh, you don't even have to be near one, you don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff, it can kill you. It just seems unfair. I haven't harmed it, I haven't gone near it, why is it getting annoyed with me? It doesn't seem right. So that's where a knowledge has- has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> another conversation with himself! Another conversation with himself! What is your favourite curse word? Um. I don't- I don't think I, I do anything like that, I just- I think people can tell by my face when I'm, like, fed up. Uh, well, they know you're fed up because you're always whinging. Uh, I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> that sums everything up and I think it's- But it you wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Uh, but she doesn't do anything to annoy me that much. But if she did, what would you say? If she really annoyed well, you? Well, knobhead's alright, innit? Cause she, she, she sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands but it's not too offensive. Right. What a knobhead. Alright, you're getting into this, aren't you? It's, so that sums it up, but I don't- I don't really- Do you need one of them? What's that doing for you? It's better to think, innit? Like, okay, I've just slagged off that octopus, but at no point was a, a effing and jeffing about it. <laughs> After, you, you know how annoyed I am with it. I don't have to start swearing about it, and th that's- that's- What would you do, though, if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing, you were on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And, it, and you see it start spitting at you, poison. What yeah, would you say well, to it? well, it's too late then, isn't it? And I'd kick it. <laughs> and I'd say, you knobhead. I, I would- uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Cause it's done its- it's done its stuff, hasn't it? <laughs> He's kicking and calling it <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh God! Oh, okay, you fucking eight-legged shit. I'm you, not bothered. I'm not bothered. I don't know what you're you saying. Fucking, fucking cunt no. of a mollusk! I just spit at you again. It's not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker! This is why the face. Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> when are the exams? June. Something like that, yeah. We're registered, we're trying to register next week, and I reckon you can get an A or B. Oh, in I'm history. Busy. I'm in busy. history. No, I'm don't worry about it, it's just easy. You get your Brody's notes. If Heat, Heat magazine, they, 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 they love you, Carl. They could probably sort something out. They could probably pay for a tutor. They've got a lot of money, they sell a lot of magazines. I mean, it is always, almost always, and you found that out, I discovered this, it's always the Tudors and Stuarts. There's no fear for that. They're not coming up now. What do you know? What do you already know about them? You must know already know stuff about Henry VIII and Elizabeth. No, because it just is too long ago to even get interested in. Do you know what I mean? You can't. Is that why you did okay. The Anderson thing. It was like God. You know, I bet my mum and dad were in an Anderson shelter. You know, this is interesting. But when they? Oh, my granddad would have like had something to do with this. <laughs> but the Tudors. It's like I don't know even if they had a family back then. God. <laughs> <laughs> It's got- uh, the problem with the moon is- <laughs> Here's a statement. The problem with the moon is dot yeah. dot dot. Yeah. The problem with the earth is there's too much water. Yeah. No, the moon, it's been- been around ages, hasn't it? Yeah. But it's got no history. It's got nothing to show for it. <laughs> Just a load of old rocks and stuff. Yeah. And for me, history is created by stuff happening on it. So really, the moon, even though it's old, in a way it's new. Because it's untouched and that. But uh, we, don't go, we don't go to the moon to visit museums <laughs> <laughs> or arcades. No, but, but say, or say, say like historical Henry, Henry, Henry the Eighth, right? Uh, you watch Antiques Roadshow or whatever, and some woman goes, Oh, this plate you've got, this was uh, Henry the Eighth's. 
uh, and y as you can see, you can see the knife marks on it. Uh, oh look, there's some chicken on it, right? And you go, oh god, yeah, that's amazing. Then someone goes in and goes, here's a plate of Henry VIII's, but it hasn't been used, it's still in the box. You'd go, well, it's not as good, that. <laughs> no, it's got no, no history. No, because very often on the Antiques Roadshow, they have Henry VIII's plate with a bit of chicken on it. <laughs> they kept that. Don't throw that away. Why? Arthur Negus are like that in a few hundred years' time. No, but do you understand what I'm saying? Things are only good if stuff's happened on it. The moon, you're up there, you're having a look, you're going, no one else has even been here. If but you go to the moon for research purposes, for scientific research. There, Steve. This what is do you what mean I'm there's saying? nothing there? They're examining the soil and the environment soil, yeah. and the air. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just a lot. Well, they're not doing that, are they? They're just, they're just not doing that. Well, well, they're not, are they? Because last time they went up, they were playing golf or something. There's golf balls up there that they've been whacking about. What sort of research is that? That's what I'm saying. There's nothing up there. So wh why, why else would you go all that way and go? Oh, nothing. Here. Fancy a knockabout? <laughs> why are they knocking golf balls about? If, if there's really important stuff to look at, you don't see people in museums going. Fancy having a knock? Uh, knock some golf balls about now. I'm looking at this vase. All oh, right, that's interesting. But on the moon, nothing, nothing to look at. What other games have you brought? That's what I mean. And then we went, went and had a look at the volcanoes and that. They've got 36 of them to look at. <laughs> How many did you look at before you realised that you, you know, pretty much, you've seen one volcano, you've seen them all. Probably about six or seven. Really. And yeah. then when you got to the eight, you thought, no, I know what this is going to be, Suzanne. This is going to be like a mountain with a hole in the top. Yeah. Really? But it happened years ago as well. It's like, just keep a couple, fill the rest in, tidy it up. <laughs> fill the so, rest in! Yeah, no, yeah. While getting some builders. No, seriously, though. Okay, four million trap. tons of concrete, please. They're an absolute death trap. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. What do you mean, fill them in? Do you know what a volcano is? Just a hole, isn't it? That's happened. Well, it's more than the hole. It's more a portal to the magma in the centre of the earth. Back in 1730 it happened, and they still haven't sorted it out. Well, when you say it happened, volcanoes were made a lot longer no, ago no, no. than 1730. No, but, but the one that did Lanzarote in. Right. Sort it out. <laughs> what do you suggest? Well, How can they fill it in? It's joined, it's all joined. No, but what I'm and saying the, is... Uh, it was the a, big it was plates of the earth are all joined, it was all the magma's disaster, joined. It? With the, with the trade centre thing, that happened, they cleaned it up, sorted it out, they've moved on. That's what I'm saying. Whereas Lanzarote have just gone, leave it. It happened back in no, 1730. you misunderstand me. How, in the name of God, can you fill in a volcano, you ignorant twit? No, but it's not just the, the holes, they've actually left the lava everywhere. That's what I mean. It's not just the big holes, there's lava everywhere. But, it's m molten rock. They can't just p pick it up like they're like a carpet. Put it in the holes. The holes are there ready. Just push it all in. <laughs> anyway, listen. Rob's question is this, Carl, and it's specifically to you. Carl, if you could have a superpower, like Superman, what would your superpower be? Can I suggest consciousness? <laughs> yeah. Can I have the power of thought? Remember, you've already got opposable thumbs. <laughs> so that, cross that one off the list. <laughs> oh, go on, Carl. There are so many to choose from. Telepathy, x-ray vision. Flight. Invisibility. Choose it wisely. Strength. Intelligence. But, but why have I been picked? Oh, for, for God's <laughs> sake! No, no, but I'm just saying- It's say, Rob's question no, for no, you. But I'd just say, does anyone else want this? Or, do you know what I mean? Oh, no, what, just, would you, what because, do you wish you no, could do that's no, impossible because, is the question, no, or uh, uh, out of, what? Because, what do you mean? Because with that comes a responsibility, is what <laughs> With I'm enormous saying. power does come great responsibility. So, would it, w well, would you like spidey senses, is that what you're saying? Uh, would you like some senses? Would you like some sense, the power of sense? Um... Come on, Carl, you know what these superheroes, because they can, they can, I know, but it they always, can freeze they, things. They're never they... happy, are they? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Spider-Man that wanted to tell that girl that he had, he could climb walls and that, he's like, I can't. <laughs> Superman didn't never tell Lewis and that. Yeah, it's Lewis. It's Lewis. Lewis. It's Lewis. Yeah. Ah. It's just a pen pal of Superman. <laughs> His little secret <laughs> chum! Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, Superman. Hello, Lewis. What are you doing? Uh, uh Superman. Uh, uh, who are you? I can't tell you, Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. You know, Hulk. He wasn't happy. <laughs> so... But you're being allowed to choose the superpower. You mm. don't have to get it forced upon you like the Hulk. <laughs> Hulk! He wasn't happy! 
It's true, he's got a theme. <laughs> he has got a theme. There's not many happy superheroes, are but there? Leaving aside the superheroes you're already aware of, yeah. what superpowers do you want? You don't have to fight crime with it, Carl. Everyone around the world now is thinking, what can Carl choose? Let's, let's, let's deliver it to him now, Carl. Think about it and give us the answer, please. Just Let me just remind you of some of the other things. Invisibility. All the time, though, or can I sort of turn that on and off? Let's say you could turn it on and off. Would that interest you? Yeah. <laughs> I'll have that. Right. <laughs> okay, and what would you do with this power of invisibility? Just sort of wander about and not just not get seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brilliant power! It's a brilliant... And, and, why... it's, put, and it's put to such <laughs> brilliant <laughs> use. <laughs> it's really well done! And why, <laughs> why would you want to walk around and not be seen in that? Uh, what would you gain from that? I don't know, you could sort of <laughs> go in go in shops when they're shut, so you don't have to go How would you crowds. get in? Just get in just before they lock up. <laughs> oh, yeah! And How would you get out? Wait till the morning. Brilliant. <laughs> so, hang on. So, <laughs> that's your use of invisibility. <laughs> yeah. They've found the power of invisibility. <laughs> you want to sneak well, into... No. Bear in mind. No, hang on, let's just... You want to sneak into HMV, right, wait for 12 hours... <laughs> <laughs> and then buy something. <laughs> ah, I love it. Just so that you don't have to be in there with other people. Do you know what? I don't want it. I don't. I don't want a power. Why not? Because I, I just don't think it'll do me any good. <laughs> I think it's more of a hindrance. <laughs> I love this. It's like, just think of his presence. We've given you a go, a trip into space, and the chance to be invisible. Mm. Not happy with any of them. Yeah, he, what he wants is a voucher for HMV. Yeah, 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 he just wants some tokens for a record shop. Some milestones in human evolution, the opposable form, the, the forward-facing eyes, the upright. These, these are these are massive things in, in taking us out of the animal kingdom. And uh, one day, Carl, you'll walk upright. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you mean about eyes facing forward? You mean, before we got here, there was people who, whose eyes were looking in their head? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. That. Is that what you No, mean? no, because when we got a sort of uh, uh, binocular vision. Is that the answer? Yeah, just cavemen in front of dinosaurs and that, they sort of went, oh. <laughs> and then... Well, it wasn't cavemen in front of dinosaurs, was it? Because cavemen weren't alive when dinosaurs were alive. There was a couple knocking about. Right, okay, fair enough. There was, there was a crossover point, surely. Uh, not for just like your 15 thinking. million, um, was the, uh, yeah, probably the, uh, yeah, the Ice Age, there were still, there no. were still big reptiles. I think it's fairly common knowledge that the dinosaurs did not exist Well, who when... gave the dinosaurs a name? Well, no, 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 <laughs> well, no, no. <laughs> Carl, now tell me, tell me back now, what are the Amish? Um, they're just, just people who, um, sort of live, uh, like in the olden times, so to them they're sort of in about, 1842 or something, so they're getting old papers and that. Um, they no, haven't caught up no, to. No, 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 no. They haven't caught, they, they, don't, they don't have telly. They don't they deny. Don't. They don't deny that the 20th century has happened. They just don't want to be part of it. They, they they look up and they see planes and they know what they are and they go into the town and they see in the window of Dixon's a telly. They just they just don't want to be part of it. No, they're they're still living. They still go. They are still living like it's yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah, but they don't. They they know they know about everything else. They just don't want to be part of it because they think that the sort of the uh, uh, revolution um, was a bad thing. They think it, you know that society became more and more depraved, and they wanted to go away from it, and they want to go back to old values, and they think they don't need TV and 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 jets and that way of life. They can they can survive in the old way because the old way was better. Missing out on live eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but they haven't had band aid yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think the, this is the problem that Carl had. He, he, in his mind, they were just a bit delayed. So yeah. that in his head, they were slowly moving towards the twentieth century. They wouldn't be able to watch most of these bands. All their electric guitar. They could. They, they'd be allowed to watch Tracy Chapman. Yeah, doing an acoustic set. Yeah, between yeah. the bands. Yeah, yeah. that would be all right. They'd but no, in Carl's mind, it's like if he. Although if they, they wouldn't like fast car. <laughs> they wouldn't like singing about that, they go, I don't know what you're talking about. Pony and Trap, you got a pony and trap, <laughs> that'd be alright. But, but are they still, do they still get sort of rubbish post and that, saying we need your money for this or, you no, know, get behind this charity? They live in a isolated community, they live, they're farmers, aren't they? 
they're farmers. It's so. an agricultural community and they're obviously very staunchly religious. Um, and that, in actual fact it would suit you very well because you hate crowds, you hate groups of people, you don't like the modern world. Well, you'd love it down there, wouldn't he you? He wouldn't like getting up at four o'clock to milk a cow though, would he? Well, no, but he'd get mm. used to it. Go back to bed, couldn't you? It's probably out- I mean, have they got anything to do with the- the Hare Krishna people? No. No. Nothing at all. Cos out of all- all the religions, that's- you know, I'm not a religious person, I, I don't- I don't understand You're it. only saying Hare Krishna cos you've got the head. That's the only reason oh, you think I, it'd I'm be- I'm halfway there. Yeah. But, but the thing <laughs> is, out of- out of all it, you just- what was- what was that? <laughs> Man, he just fell out of my pocket where I'm- I'm nearly laying down! <laughs> That's the danger of wearing sweatpants <laughs> everywhere you go. I, I don't think ever lying down in a chair! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm- I'm- you know, I've never been a religious type, you know, if people oh. want to do it, I let them do it and what have you. Good of you. But out of all of them, mm. the- I, I want one that's not gonna take over your life. I don't want one where you've got to get up three times a day and you've got to go and pray and that, you've got to get up early. Forget that. It's yep. getting in the way. But if it's something like, um, I was walking to work the other day, right, across Oxford Street, um, there's a little Harry Krishna fella there, and, uh, he sort of had, uh, he had a leaflet and stuff, and, uh, he said, you know, are you interested? And I said, what do you do? And, uh, he said, well, you know, we're against getting stressed out and what have you. And, um, he gave me a plum. <laughs> they hand out food for some reason. <laughs> but, um, I sort of asked a few <laughs> questions. <laughs> Let us do yeah. These two bold people, one yeah. of which is wearing an orange smock, Holding a plum in the middle. He hands the other one a, pl pl a plum. It's almost, it's almost like you could imagine some kind of religious painting. <laughs> yeah, <It's> exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, you know, what, what is their sort of main thing, because he didn't really tell me that much. He was a, a Japanese bloke, so I didn't know what, what he was saying that, that much. Why? He well, wasn't speaking English? Not, not very well. He wasn't the best sales bloke to send out for them, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But what, what's that? Are they- you're saying they're nothing like- Well, I believe Hare Krishna is a- is a kind of, um, as an offshoot of a sort of Buddhist faith. It is, and, I think um, they are Buddhist, aren't they? Yeah, and obviously the- obviously their most- their, their kind of trademark, as it were, is that they have to say- I believe they have to say Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna in a certain rhythm, in a certain order, a certain amount of times per day. That's why you see them walking down the street saying Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna, because it's actually a, a sort of religious chant which they're obliged to do. So, you see, even if you go into the Hare Krishna faith, you may find yourself, you know, in Tesco or whatever, forced to say Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna. Perhaps out, why? Out loud, out, not out loud. just thinking it. Yeah, no, no, out loud. You can put it on an iPod and You can put that on an iPod and it doesn't count. No, I think you have to actually say it. So I guess that kind of eats into your, into your social life a little bit. And then the, and there's, there's the wearing orange as well. Particularly frustrating, I imagine, if you're in a, in a cinema or a library. <laughs> a little bit awkward there, you know, midway through, um, or Star you Wars live whatever. next door to a bloke called Harry Krishna, <laughs> yeah. who constantly thinks you're calling him. Yeah, that, that probably. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's in this. I mean, I don't think we've quite done the the uh, Harry Krishna faith. It's full service there. But uh, so interesting to you. I mean, you you got handed a plum. You've been treated well by them. Yeah. Well, but he couldn't tell. I, I just wanted to know how much time it would take up. Uh, what are the benefits? Mm. Um, you know, what can you? Do what can well, I think do? the benefits are they probably don't get stressed out. They've probably got that sort of that that zen, that that that, that chiness about them where they they try and interact and quite meditative. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I've got some nice trainers as well, don't they? With their yeah. Their orange. <laughs> what are you bit. looking for then in a faith car? You say you it, it's, what are the benefits? I mean, obviously Catholicism, you get the communion wine and um, bread. So yeah, but I can afford that. Right. Um, <laughs> probably. Uh, just, just, I liked the Crusaders, I was forced into joining that as a kid, because a mate sort of joined it, and, uh, he sort of said, are you joining? Uh, I sort of swore at him, I said, I'm not doing that, right? Yeah. He said, right, if you don't come with me, I'll, uh, I'll tell your mum that you just swore. <laughs> so I was like, oh. So, so, I went, <laughs> so I went along, and they used to just go on the Friday when they played, you know, Sabutio and stuff, and then I went on one Sunday and it was, it was totally different. There was no Sabutio. There was no sort of, you know, uh... Table tennis. Uh, the thing where you hold a, a thing and knock things over. Uh, Skittles. Skittles. There was all that on a Friday. Went on the Sunday, it was rubbish. <laughs> he said, right, sit down in this room. They gave me a Bible. Thought, this looks too heavy, this. This is too big. I'm not interested in this book. And, uh, I never went again. I used to hide on a Sunday when they came round. 
And um, <laughs> that, that's that's been the only song. <laughs> <I've watched. laughs> I, I, I suddenly, why did suddenly turn out to have to hide on a Sunday <laughs> when they're coming round? Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't leave. They wouldn't leave. Who the, was the it? Were they adults? It was a yeah, sort of a. Well, he seemed like an adult to me at the time, but he was probably about twenty-seven. Like well, that, that is an adult. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? He seemed a lot older when I was a kid. Yeah. And he came knocking and that, and he used to say to me, "Mama, I'll just tell him I'm ill or something." And uh, he used to hang around to see if I if I'd eventually come out to play in that. And if I did, I think they would have grabbed me and, and took me there. I love the idea that you want that for you. Religion has to pr bring with it some kind of gift. It's like you know, join our faith and you get an alarm clock radio. It's but, like something like but that. I think religion, but I think religion does bring a gift. Usually, it's well, the, the gift of the Lord. W well, the gift of everlasting life, isn't yeah. it? And that's the problem with it. You know, a lot of people believe in it because they think. But the, for Carl, oh, right. he's. His